everybody, and welcome to this Tombra digital launch event. My name is Volker Rehrmann. I'm responsible for Tomra Recycling Mining Division and the Circular Economy Division. This event is a premiere to Tomra, and it's probably a premiere to you. It's the first digital product launch event that we do. And of course, it's just another sign of what the pandemic and how the pandemic affects our lives and our businesses considerably. I understand we have more than 1,000, I think 1,300 people who registered for this event. Probably not all will be live now, but I understand there are already several hundred people live. So thank you for joining. Thank you for your interest, uh, despite what's going on right now. And of course, this pandemic, you know, also affects Tomra. Right in the beginning, like many other companies, we took care about the safety of our employees. Everybody who could work from home worked from home. After that, we set up business continuity plans. And it's mainly about uh, staying in contact with your employees, but also with your customers, which is, of course, very important, as good as we can. I think we've all learned a lot how we can use the new digital tools at its best. And it has worked reasonably well. And the same we do today with our virtual product launch. Our industry is affected by this pandemic. There are some sectors, especially the metals recycling sector, but also the general plastics recycling sector, uh, which are heavily affected by a low demand for material, also very low commodity prices. But there are also some sectors, like the traditional household waste sorting, packaging sorting, but also PT recycling sector, which you know, stay on track with their long-term commitments for their recycling targets partly driven by legislation and partly driven by the commitments that brand owners have given and still stay loyal to. I'm glad to say that Tomra is a solid company. We believe in the long-term future of a circular economy and our responsibility towards the environment, our customers and the society very seriously. But the bright future we see ahead of us requires the cooperation and smooth interaction of the industry and all stakeholders along the value chain. You might have wondered about the title of this event, Symphony of All Sorts. Well, a good example for perfect interaction between all elements is nature. One reaches into the other, nothing is lost. It's like an endless symphony where various instruments work together and align to form a beautiful whole and bring best results. One of nature's instruments are resources. Resources are currently exploited. We know resources are finite and, and not like a streaming service where new contents are uploaded every minute. We all know, you and I, we know very well that we are currently over-exploiting Mother Nature's resources. We can't continue like this. Once the resources are gone, they are gone forever. We don't have a second planet we can, we can rely on. That's why we need to keep the resources in circulation, like a musical loop. There is simply no alternative to it. The shift to a circular economy is paramount. The awareness for a circular economy and the importance of sustainability increases as finite resources are opposed to our infinite appetite. If we see resources as an instrument of nature's orchestra, we will recognize that we have reached a point where the system is at risk and more and more dissonances mix into the sound. We take too much from nature and we compensate too little. In our nice analogy of nature and symphony, this means there is no harmony anymore. We are no longer talking about a powerful, harmonious symphony, but about disruptive sounds. But there's also some positive news here. The unpleasant noise is heard by many, by consumers, by producers, the entire industry, also our governments. They all ask for more responsible and sustainable treatment of nature's resources. 
And there are three key elements for it. You all know them. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Of course, we have to reduce the amount of material we use, especially in packaging. It's ridiculous how we sometimes package a certain product. We should also use more of reuse models, like we did in the past with refillable bottles and, and, and all that. There are more opportunities to reuse material and not use it just once and send it to waste. And last but not least, that's what we are here for. It's about recycling. Recycling, which brings material back into the loop to be used forever and ever. We at Tomra are fully aware of the importance of this task and are accelerating the shift to a circular economy with both our deep knowledge and with our products, which we will learn today, our sensor-based sorting solutions. New ideas and new technologies create new music. Today, artificial intelligence can imitate Bach's sound sequences and symphonies and so can artificial intelligence help to improve our sorting efficiency, as you will learn later uh, today. But creating new sounds and a perfect symphony is not done overnight. Bach and Beethoven practiced for a long time to reach the peak performance, and so do we at Tomra. Since 1996, we continuously develop and optimize our sorting solutions to extract valuable resources from various kinds of waste streams. I'm very pleased to announce that Tomra will take an even more holistic and networked approach to the development of circular models in the future. Our new division, Circular Economy, will support the various material value chains to work together more harmoniously and break new ground. In Tomra, we have a unique position with our deep experience of collecting material, also with our reverse vending machines uh, division and our vast knowledge of deposit systems, but as well in upgrading the collected material to the highest quality that will allow for closing the loop for the materials. We will continue to develop the most advanced solutions that help to create circular value streams and bring harmony to industry, society, and nature. We develop instruments that can play different genres and sort materials of all sorts, including plastics, metals, paper, and many more. Supported by our digital solutions, Tomra Inside, that monitor the orchestra's performance and report disbalances, we can keep the melodies in rhythm. But a symphony and an orchestra are not enough. It needs more than just instruments. They need guidance. They need a conductor. Tom Eng, our longtime head of our recycling unit, will now explain to you how to arrange an exemplary orchestra. Thank you. Thank you, Fulke, for presenting the Symphony of All Sorts concept from our studio in Germany. And good afternoon from Norway. You can probably see my title here or there, so I'll go straight to my points. I have the honor and pleasure of conducting the recycling orchestra at Tomra. And I've learned in my more than 22 years with the company that a perfect high-performing symphony is the result of its components that are seamlessly interacting and collaborating. Our systems, being one of multiple instruments in a plant, can only exist because our excellent team of engineers draw on their experience and expertise to develop those systems. Human collaboration is key. And by now we mentioned two of the instruments, the technology and the team. But there is a third one, the value chain within the industry. Our cross-value chain collaboration, our participation in huge organizations, and our close relationships to the customers and end users helps us to create value and to develop the sorting solutions and sorting technologies needed to meet current and future demands. This composition makes our symphony unique, powerful and stable. There is, however, always room for improvements and a need to adapt to new situations and to compensate dissonances. 
For this, we worked on three new instruments for our symphony of all sorts that indeed sort all types of waste. Now, I will soon switch back to the studio in Germany so Ralph can explain what it takes to compose a piece of music with new instruments before we then listen to the sound. But please do not forget to post specific questions you have on our online platform, which we will then handle in the Q&A sessions. Ralph, take it away. Thomas just mentioned that we worked on three new instruments for our new song. The question might arise, how do we proceed in developing new instruments? Our innovation process involves numerous stakeholders from internal and external. And to do research and development and to collect, of course, customer needs of today and tomorrow. So after the framework is set, so the requirements are clear. Um, um, <laughs> We, we start building our first prototypes for internal validation. Afterwards, we go into field validations, wherever it may be for a period of three to six months. At the same time, we have to ramp up production capabilities, train our service uh, staff and sales forces to ensure that all parts are there. This process shows the need for smooth collaboration for the exchange of knowledge and experience. We are running through this process now for a couple of years, and we can build on experience and expertise here. As Volker mentioned in the introduction, the first Autosort was built in 1996, and since then it got subject to numerous improvements around the sensors, so the signal-to-noise ratio, the re resolution, the illumination setup, the valve surrounding, and basically also to image processing, where we, and by that you as our customers, clearly benefit from the enormous steps which have been made in computing power. So today, we are able to run and sort with much higher belt speeds, and at the same time, we can use deep learning, so artificial intelligence classification for a better material sort. This has now made us reach the next level to create new instruments for our new song, for our symphony. Let's listen to it. Hello and welcome everybody. We are now here in the test facility in Mülheim Kerlisch, where I would like to show you more about the new products. You have heard already the sounds of the machines, but now I would like to explain you more the technical benefits of these new products. What we see here is now the new Autosort generation. Within this new Autosort generation, we have the new generation of flying beam, which we doubled the efficiency of the flying beam technology. In addition to that, we also have the possibility to monitor the illumination automatically. And also, we focus on easy maintenance and easy access to the different components. What also we have integrated within the compact design are additional technologies. These additional technologies are, for example, laser technology, which provides deep learning and gives more opportunities in terms of sorting performance and additional applications. Just to give you one example here, deep learning helps, for example, for sorting out PE silicon cartridges. In addition to that, we also focused on operational costs. 
which means we have a new valve block design with more power, more performance and less air consumption. But that's not the end. Following the strategy of symphony of all sorts, we are also combining this new and innovative technology together with complementary products. And this is something which I would like to show you as the next product, is the Autosort Speed Air. The Autosort Speed Air has been developed for film sorting and paper sorting. And what are the typical characteristics of the Autosort Speed Air? We have a high speed belt which can run up to 6 meters per second. And in addition to that, during the development, we focused on flexibility and easy maintenance and easy access to the machine. What does that mean? If we look deeper into the machine, we see that we have no belt cover, so an open belt, which gives a low risk of blockages. And in addition to that, the system is available as components and gives the highest flexibility on the market. But now, let's have a look how the machine is performing. And I would like to show you the sorting capability of the unit. Let's go. So now you have heard the sounds and also the, uh, uh, the rhythm of the machines. And I would like to welcome Tom and pass over to uh, Norway where he will explain and translate these technical benefits from a customer perspective into customer benefits. Thank you very much. Back to Norway again. Thank you Valeria for that very interesting and detailed presentation of our outstanding new products. Our new Autosort is indeed impressive. Due to our new generation flying beam technology, more materials can be detected and sorted. This way, we generate the high sorting performance, which is furthermore complemented by low operating costs and simple maintenance, resulting from a minimized usage of lamps. And as a matter of fact, a recent customer survey we did with our customers show that those three elements Sorting performance, low operating costs, and simple maintenance are some of the three main elements they put into consideration when they are investing in sensor-based sorting. Although the usage of those lamps is kept at a minimum, our light intensity is now twice as high as with previous versions, which leads to better signal-to-noise ratio while keeping the, the same energy consumption. This improved signal to noise ratio enables a better separation of material, which will give that improved sorting performance I talked about. And integrating the deep laser technology brings the advantage of so solving sorting tasks, which previously could be difficult to, to sort. A good example here are the PE silicon cartridges, which are similar to other PE objects and can easily be mistaken as those ending up in the wrong stream. This is now sold with due to the Tomra deep laser. In combination with the Autostart Speeder, it offers even more benefits. With the installation of those Autostart Speed Air machines and their high speed conveyors, throughput can be significantly Im improved, actually more than 50%, and the plant's footprint can be reduced. This is all improving your profit as a customer. The material is rather stable on the belt as it is an uncovered belt and that also avoids any type of blockage of material. Being available both as a package or single components 
gives you the full flexibility. And that airflow has been improved because we have used external experts and consultants to make sure that it's really the best. But Valerio, we are not done. I know we have more things to present. Thank you from Norway. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom, and uh, welcome back. So what we have learned in the previous sessions is that the new AutoSort is combining different innovative technologies together within a compact design. And in addition to that, it is also combining complementary equipment. And that brings me exactly to the next point, which I would like to show you as an outlook what is coming next beyond AutoSort and AutoSort Speedair. What you see now behind me is a combination of the new AutoSort system with the robotic system called AutoSort Cybot. The AutoSort Cybot is given an extra portion of automation and it's combining the AutoSort system, which is the brain and the heart of the system, with the mechanical part, the robot arm, which I would like to show you a bit more in detail. What you can see here is a robot arm which is picking four fractions at the same time. Uh, and I'm always like to say four plus one fractions because it's picking four fractions and one fraction is in the exit. The picking device is a suction system where the robot arm is combined with the brain. The brain as such, so the auto source system, is able to detect um, and to have three, more than three uh, technologies at the same time, which is one of the first robots in the market. But now I would like to show you the robot more in action. What we will see now is a PT fraction where the robot is sucking different uh, PT bottles. Let's go. So what we saw now, uh, including the Autosol Cybot, is just the start of the symphony. During the, during the next uh, months, you will uh, hear more sounds and more beats about our products. Now I would like to pass over to Fabrizio, uh, to Italy, which he will explain more about the customer benefits and summarize what you have heard today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Valerio. I'd like to answer a couple of questions. We are launching this new sound with the latest sorting technology. But what about for our customers? First, our new AutoSort is much more compact and robust. Using the latest flying bean technology, combined with the artificial intelligence embedded into the deep laser technology, will allow our customer to have an easy life in install this new innovation in old and new plants by saving money and time. But as you can see, we are launching three new machines. The new AutoSort, the SpeedAir, and the Cybot. All three of them, they are speaking the same digital language. They are using the same software and they are running on the same Tomra Insight platform by enabling our customers to really analyze the data online of our sorter everywhere in the globe. This outstanding product portfolio will enable our partner, customer, and system integrator to operate their plan in the most economical and efficient way by increasing the purity rate and saving a lot of energy as well as our planet. The second question. Where our new AutoSort and its complementary product play the best? They are playing the best everywhere in the globe. They are really playing in the hardest condition everywhere in each and every temperature. Our service and sales team is located everywhere in the globe and supporting you with the local language and the local touch. They've been already trained because we already installed 
several of those machines in several plants. The new autosort, the Speedair and the Cybot, will allow our customers, partners and system integrator to operate their plant in the most economical and efficient way by boosting the recovery rate and by helping our customer to go to the next level. All these machines, they have embedded in their DNA our innovation and passion. I would like now to move the stage to our regional directors and getting the insight of their local market and local touch. The ball now is to Ted and to Asia. Ted, the stage is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Jintian or Bei Changa Ozing or Mong Kong Su Fabu Singing Daughter Autosort. Mata, Kodoshi Asia Deno, Sechi Da Isu Senda Yo, Taseshi Takoto, Kokoku Idashimas. Corona Ilgu Sangi Chomdo Hojan Demian, Chikjap Chada Beko, Sangse Salmong Dido Kagasimida. Thank you once again. Thank you, Ted. Thank you too for sending masks over when the crisis peaked. This enabled us to keep the team safe and production running, which in return allowed us to further serve our customer needs. Despite the situation, we have already got orders for more than 100 units of the new Autosort for selected pilot projects, which confirms the success of the new machine and its latest technology. We are ready to meet you in person again. Good morning from the other side of the world. You just heard good news from the team and as well from my colleagues in Asia and Europe, Ted and Christoph. In the Americas, the situation is still difficult, but we need to adapt to these new challenges. That's why communication and network are basic. The launch of these incredible new technologies are essential to support you, our customers, and to show the world that our commitment stays regardless of the situation. On behalf of our team and our partners around the continent, we hope and we wish you are all safe and healthy. Now is your turn, Tassos. Thank you, Carlos. So, last but not least, we are also present in emerging markets, ranging from the Middle East and Africa to CIS and East Europe countries. Despite the global crisis, emerging markets are growing even better than before. With this new innovation and machine, we are confident that we will increase the success and we really look forward to welcoming you all in this Symphony of Sort event. Many thanks for these international messages. I'm really proud of you and our team. As you can see, we are playing on a global scale and our international team is really working to support you everywhere around the globe. Everyone is playing their role in this new symphony of sort. And as you can see, we can support you everywhere. We learn a lot from you and we would like to share with you this journey and this new sound. We really establish new technology and constantly develop new innovation as well new partnership and collaboration. I would like now to thank you for your attention and participation. I hope you enjoy it very much and you are excited like we are. This last hour information will be embedded in a new platform, new website dedicated to this. You will get as well all those information through our Salesforce. Thank you again. I pass now the stage to Stella and the team over there. Enjoy and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Fabrizio. And welcome everybody to our Q&A session. As you can see on your browser, already embedded on the browser, you have Slido. And this is the tool that you can use to ask, her, to ask us a lot of questions. So questions about products, questions about the symphony of all sorts, and of course, questions about Tomra. To answer them, I have on stage Volker, Ralph, and of course, 
Valerio, please. Just, just in time. <laughs> <laughs> and we also kept Fabrizio and Tom. Fabrizio live from Italy and Tom live from Norway. Hello. Thank you from Italy. This is no witch jury. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello, Fabrizio. So, as I see here, we have a lot of questions. Uh, this is no surprise. Uh, you seem to be quite interested in our product, so I think we're ready to start. First question is, what is the purpose of AutoSort be there? Who is going to answer this one? I'm, I'm happy to answer that, Stella, if that's, that's okay. So one of the fundamental problems we have in plastics recycling is really how do we deal with plastic films? Currently, plastic films are not really recycled. And, and, and why it's not so much a problem of sorting plastic films as such, it's the economical sorting of plastic films. It's lightweight and, you know, with traditional systems, the throughput is quite limited. What we can do with speed there is we can, you know, we, we give some airflow, as you've learned, and can significantly increase the belt speed. Uh, which means we can run much more material and do plastic film sorting much more economical. Of course, this means when the belt is much faster, you need to have a very high resolution, resolution optical system, which we do, which we have introduced with the latest uh, launch here. Okay, thank you. Another question. What is the difference between LOD and deep laser? Who is answering this? I can, I can take this, uh, this question instead. Thank you very much. Um, so basically, so both systems are based on laser technology. Yeah. Um, with the LOD system, um, we had it in a separate box, which we then added to the autosort system. And uh, that was the, uh, the intention to detect black objects, to, just to reduce the limits of the uh, near infrared technology in that case. Now with the deep laser, we go one step further. So first of all, we keep the modularity and the uh, uh, of the system, yeah. Uh, of course, with the functionality that we had before uh, as well, uh, and it is integrated into the whole system. So to be more compact, uh, and at the end of the day, also to uh, uh, to reduce uh, customer, uh, let's say, customer uh, operational costs. Mm -hmm. Then I think what is really, really important is the functionality of the system. So we added functionalities, like for example, a shape detection, which then comes uh, to the deep learning approach. Which we, where we use the deep laser uh, as well, um, which then you have an integrated compact system, so providing new technology like deep learning technology, uh, which then of course increases the sorting efficiency. Okay. Um, can you recognize can, can you recognize black polymer type? I don't know if one of you wants to answer I here. I can take it then. Okay. So um, the the NIR part does not recognize the black ones. But therefore, we have integrated the deep laser technology into the system. So uh, independent of the background color of the belt, uh, we detect that there's a black object and we can sort it out as an impurities or as invaluable um, by this. So, um, but it's just telling that there is a black object. It's not differentiating in the polymer type. Thanks, Rolf. When can we expect the official market launch of Autosort Cybot? Would you like to answer this one here or maybe Tom or Fabrizio? I will take Fabrizio here. Yes. Thank you, Stella. So I'm uh, really happy to answer this question. Uh, as you know, as you saw from Valerio, uh, we already have a couple of units already into our test center, Mullen Kerlich. So we can start uh, demonstrate the unit as of today, uh, because the unit is uh, available over there. And uh, we would like to launch uh, the unit externally, officially, uh, for our customer before the end of the year. Okay, thank you. What exactly is sharp eye? Do we answer this? I'm yes. happy to take it, Stella, okay. if I may. Sure. It's still my passion for, uh, for technology. Uh, so one of the you know, very important parameters for the quality of a sensor-based sorting system is the signal strength, the sensitivity uh, of the sensor-based system. It's a little bit comparable to your smartphones. 
You know, when everything is bright and sunny, your pictures look beautiful. But when it's a little bit more dark and the sensitivity of your optical system is not good, everything looks blurry and noisy. And it's the same here. And what sharp eye is for us, it's a special lens, propriety designs, that really optimizes the, uh, the amount of light that we can get into our system and that makes the, the, the images, the signals we get, perfect. And that allows us to distinguish even objects where the spectra is, is very similar, with small, subtle differences. So it's a very important part to optimize the optical sensitivity of your system. Thank you, Volker. Is it possible to upgrade existing systems in the field? Do we answer here on stage? Or maybe Tom and Fabrizio? Yeah. I, I can take this one. Yes, depends a little bit what the person is asking about. Because if you talk about the auto sort, it is possible to uh, as the new auto sort has a similar footprint and, and with, as the previous version, it is possible to upgrade uh, to, to the new one. However, if you talk about the technology in science or the, the deep laser and the flying beam, that is not possible to upgrade. Uh, but if the person is now talking about the speed there, again, as we talked about, you can have that as a full package or as uh, components. Uh, so if you have a, a previous version of the auto sort, you can add the the speed their components to that setup. Uh, but I would highly recommend that you talk to our sales guys to make sure that it fits into to the plant, of course, on the physical limits. Okay. Thanks, Tom. I have a, a quite a long question here, so I will read it step by step. Does the air not need a cover to be effective? Also, on the return air is not paper recirculating, and is it operational in, and in how many plants and applications? I can take this long question, <laughs> but maybe you need to assist. Uh, yes. So the first part of the question: Does the speed air? I guess it's speed air related. Uh, does not need a cover. No, it does not need a cover. So our our the way how we arrange the. Uh, the air providing system is that we go from the back and we compress the material to the belt. So by this um, we don't need a cover and we clearly see this as a customer benefit, as an, uh, as an advantage, because for maintenance reasons um, the system is open, you can see how it behaves, the people walking around in the plant could immediately see if there's a blockage. Second part of the question was uh, blocking something in the also in the, the air looping air system paper recirculating. Uh, as it's a technical system so yeah it might happen but the system is arranged and set up uh, with some protection for it so the the catcher the design the separation chamber uh, has a mechanical um, setup that uh, this should not happen last part of the question is it operational and how many plants and applications Yes, uh, as mentioned, we go into field applications, uh, etc. So we are in a couple of plants already uh, in different applications and uh, um, they really vary. So in, in, in principle, it's flexible or paper sorting. And we are also in some locations where, which are where the customers uh, treat construction and dis demolition waste, where it's very, very dusty and the system has proven uh, to do so. Thank you. What are the additional technologies available on the new auto sort? Yeah, maybe I can. Okay. I can answer this uh, this question, uh, Stella. Um, yeah. So basically, when we talk about the scanner as such, so when we really talk about sensors, so we are combining more sensors uh, with the new auto sort. So like uh, uh, the laser technology, which then we can provide also deep learning. So in this uh, compact system. Uh, I think in addition to that, um, I would like to touch the topic complementary products, uh, what we have seen as well uh, a couple of minutes ago, so that we also combine different uh, add-ons, different technologies together with the new auto sort. So like, for example, the speed air uh, approach, uh, the speed air unit, or also uh, robotic that we can also combine it as well. 
So these are the main, let's say, the main new technologies which are uh, integrated. And of course, when we talk about new flying beam generation, uh, new, new setup, uh, that's also something that is integrated as well that we improved uh, in, that, uh, in that case. Yeah. Maybe I can add one thing. Of course, Ralph, of course. Uh, so in terms of the way how we process the data and do the classification, so the software system which comes with it is also completely new. And we have new methods in identifying and classifying the material. Okay, thanks. Um, I think here is a customer question. It says, do I need to buy the complete machine including belt and hood? Or is it possible to buy only speed air components? Do we answer to this one here or? Maybe... I will take this one, Stella. OK, thanks, Fabrizio. Of course, as usually, Tomra would like to be uh, very flexible uh, with our partners and system integrator, as well with our customers. Uh, so for this reason, we decide to have uh, the possibility and to leave the possibility to the customer and the partner and the system integrator to decide if by the speed air only or together with the belt and the catcher wood. So this is a decision of uh, our customer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thanks. What is the new, what is new in this version of Flying Beam? I can take that, Stella, because it's related to the question okay. of, of, uh, of, of the sharp eye. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the sensitivity of the entire sensor-based system is extremely important. And in our new ultrasort, in the new flying beam concept, we have really optimized everything that was possible. So the sharp eye, the lens, the propriety design lens, is, is an, a, a part of the system. It's not an option as it was in the past. It's, it's always included. And we have optimized the complete optical path in, in the system. So this optical system is even more sensitive than the sharp eye of, of the last version. Um, that simply means you know, with the same intensity of the signal, of, of the light source, you get a much more powerful signal. And for everybody who, who understands a little bit about you know, sensor signal to noise ratio, this is extremely important for sorting difficult types of objects. OK, thanks. Is the test center in MK available for the new Autosort speeder and Cybot already? I can take it, Stella. Good. So um, all machines we are presenting today are available in the test center, so you can test it. And I guess the best way is that you use your normal contact channel to Tomra, so sales or business development, and then you can test it. Okay, thank you. What are the numbers of peaks per minute of the robotic arm? I, I believe it's about Cybot. Yeah, I, I can take the Cybot, the Cybot question. Um, that's of course a little bit depending on the application. So if I have, uh, uh, let's say, a bit more objects which uh, uh, which are more heavier or more lighter, uh, that of course makes makes a difference. But in our experience, it shows that uh, during our internal uh, validation, what we have seen, that we can reach, let's say, more than 70 picks per minute. Mm -hmm. And then of course it depends what you want to sort out, how many fractions you want to sort out, and uh, what kind of objects you want to sort out. I think very important to understand is here, of course, not only the picks per minutes that really the robot is picking, mm -hmm. but how many picks are really successful at the end. I think this I is the more... I question of picks per, picks, pick up a second. How, can, how many bottles can a robot pick up a second? It's related to this one and Yeah, then I think you can just calculate it. So 70, more than 70 picks per minute, then it's... Uh, okay. A little bit more than one a second. One, yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct. <laughs> you have many engineers <laughs> on stage. <laughs> <coughs> Regarding Cybot, are you planning to use it as quality control only? We answer here or in Italy or Norway. I, I can take that one. Okay. Uh, good question, Stella. Um, no, it's not only for quality control. Uh, say if in a plant you have a residue line, um, and there will always in the residue line, there will always be some material or, or some good materials and recyclables. So then you can use the cyber to pick out those valuables. 
uh, but it depends on how much is in the line and, and uh, how many and how valuable so that you can actually make a, a business case of it. But uh, it's not only for quality control, it can also be used in, in that position. Okay, thanks Tom. Is the AI system developed internally or via a partner? Should we answer? Okay, you want to take it as, yeah, I can, as I, your background? Yeah, I yeah I, I, to I, 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 I'm happy to, to take it. Um, this, the answer to that is it's mostly developed internally. We have early on hired a new team of deep learning experts. And we are very proud that we did this early on. And, and, and we now have a team of more than pe 10 people exclusively working on designing and configuring the deep learning networks. Uh, and that comes on top of you know, the, the hundred other engineers we have that work on the optical design, that work on the mechanical design, that work on all the software developments. So it's, an, it's a team of highly specialized people, difficult to find these days, and we are very proud that we were able to get the, those people on board. Thanks. Is it possible to see the speed there and the cybot working in an industrial environment in Europe? Maybe something for Fabrizio? Or? Fabrizio, maybe? Yes, we are uh, happy to uh, show, I, we cannot mention, of course, now uh, the name of the customer, uh, but we already installed uh, the speed air in uh, multiple units uh, in a couple of plants. So then we can really show uh, differently in our test center as well uh, really live in one of our uh, friendly customers. Thank you. Can you explain the new brighter light system, please? Yeah, uh, I, I think that would be too much. This would end up in a lecture uh, of, uh, <laughs> about physics here. But if you think about what, what is important um, when you want to have a more sensitive uh, system, it's the lens system and it's the optical path. So the shorter the optical path, and also if you have some mirroring surfaces in between, all those play a role. You need to optimize that. The shorter uh, the distance, uh, the, the better. Uh, I talked about the proprietary design lens. Uh, so it's fundamentally about that. And if we talk about the total system, what is of course also extremely important is the sensitivity of the sensor as such. So it's a light, the optical system and the sensor. And everything here has been optimized. Are you developing the same type of high performance technology for plastic <coughs> flake sorting? I can I can I can take this. Of co of course, of course I cannot talk too much about that, yeah. Uh, if if we would do something in this in this direction, uh, of course uh, you can you can imagine if uh, everything has a start, a starting point uh, when you talk about new technologies, a new approach. Uh, into into sensor based sorting and um, it would be let's say uh, obvious let's say to look also into other products uh, to use this technology as well yeah but more of course due to confidential reasons i cannot tell too much about that yeah okay can you separate pet fraction of bottle tray mono multi layer i can i could take it uh, not difficult uh, not uh, easy to answer so uh, basically, yes, so we can distinguish this. But if we especially come to mono layer uh, versus multi-layer, there's a huge variety of multi-layer materials, the way how it is built into the material, so the uh, overlapping thickness of the other material. So there are some limitations which we can work on with the, the, the person who uh, asked that question. But basically, this is possible. You can see that Ralph is an engineer. <laughs> a salesperson would have said yes. <laughs> uh, and an engineer says yes in principle, but it depends. Uh, so. Sorry. <laughs> no, all good. I think this is uh, perfectly right. 
I think everybody can imagine that it really depends. You cannot say that you, in principle, get, can detect all multilayers. It depends on the structure of the multilayers. Just think about the first layer that is very thick and non-transparent. Of course, nobody, you know, with, with an optical system that measures the surface, you cannot look through it. Uh, so it really depends on the thickness of the various layers. It depends on the transparency of various layers. That's why you cannot give a standard answer. Everybody who gives you a standard answer, yes, of course, we can do multi-layer, you should better uh, ask twice. Okay, so I, I think we answered this one. Cyber robot, at what rate does this operate? Yeah, of, of course, whatever rate in this in this case means. Uh, if we talk about picks per minute, we, we talked about that. So that's what we see, more than 70 picks per minute. Um, in terms of throughput, of course, it depends on the application. So when we talk about metal application, it's probably a bit more. When we talk about plastic application, it's a bit, it's a bit less. Uh, and then, of course, what is important as well, when we talk about throughput on a robotic system, is how many objects really he needs to pick. I think that's the most important point. Of course, if more objects you need to pick, then you need to slow down a bit your throughput. And uh, if you have to uh, just uh, grab a, a partly uh, a small object size uh, amount of objects, then um, you can even run a bit more higher throughputs. Yeah. Okay. Still about uh, uh, Cybot. Is AutoSort Cybot stable? Well, this is, uh, I mean, this is a good, very good question because um, uh, it depends what from which uh, perspective we see. The detection, yes, it is. Um, the mechanical approach, we are currently in the phase to test this as well into the field. We have a lot of good questions. Yeah. <laughs> what about the recognition of the gray co and color cardboard? Is it improved? Uh, I can take it. So um, the sharp IA setup, so the optical pass, uh, in principle leads to um, better material separation. And especially when the materials by their spectra are very close to each other. And uh, one of the field installations uh, we have is also in paper. And we have very, very good results from this. Uh, so, but of course, it depends on the application, the concentration. Uh, basically, yes. OK. Can, you, can your system separate? Plastics, for example, HDPE from silicon. I can also take it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, a lot I, of technical I, questions. <laughs> <laughs> so if, um, uh, from silicon, of course, but maybe behind this question is also silicon tubes. So the surrounding cover uh, of this, so which is often seen as an impurity, due to not due to the material outside, but to the silicon inside. And uh, for this, um, we have uh, worked on, on uh, object dis detection, uh, working on deep laser, uh, de deep laser technology, and then also on um, deep learning classification. So yes, and as silicon cartridges have a really defined shape, so there are some which have double uh, cartridges. And, so it's a quite easy task with us where we have very good results. It's a perfect application mm -hmm. for artificial in intelligence object recognition. It works very well in this application. Okay. What does deep in deep laser stand for? Deep learning or does it have different, a different meaning? Yeah, I can, I can uh, take uh, this one. Um, actually, it is two meanings. So first of all, when we talk about deep laser, is that we are really looking deeper into the detection in that case uh, with the laser technology, like for example, shape recognition. And of course, due to the fact that we can use the deep laser technology to do deep learning, uh, of course, uh, it has also the meaning of deep learning in the name as well. No. Okay. Uh, when can we test the systems? I believe we can we, again take we this. <laughs> so all these machines are installed and available in the test center. Mm -hmm. So after going the normal contact way to your sales or business development person, uh, everyone can test it. Okay. Uh, I think this is this is this is then answered. What is the new auto? Um, when is the new auto sort available for testing of PET bottles at your testing center? So yeah, that's done. What is the speed of the conveyor for their speed air system? 
So the uh, max speed that we are currently targeting is uh, up to six meters per second with the speeder system, yeah. Okay. But depends on the, the grain size, etc., and sure. the, ma the material, so sure. um, paper might be different to the yeah. flexible. Yeah, good point, yeah. Okay, thank you, too. What is the advantage of the robot compared to a regular valve block? Oh, I'm happy to take that. <laughs> I could speak for hours about this hype for, for, for robots. Uh, we should be very clear about, first of all, the fact that the traditional optical sorter is also a robot. You know? uh, and what we today call a robot, we basically mean it's a combination of a detection system and a mechanical arm to separate the objects. That is what today is called a robot. But of course, you could see also an optical sorter as a robot. Uh, it's an automatic system that, you know, sorts, uh, sorts object. If you ask me what is the main advantage of a robot sorter, I would see two. First of all, it's a footprint. You, 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 you can install a robot system very easily, you know, integrated into an existing manual sorting line. That's one of the advantages that, that goes very easy. And then there's one other fundamental uh, advantage. Uh, a, a robot arm can sort various types of fractions. Whereas a valve block typically only sorts, you know, two different, the good ones and the bad ones. But remember, this comes as a price. A robot arm can sort various fractions, but the price you have to pay for it is it's a significantly reduced capacity. So this only works on, on input streams with significantly lower throughput. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's a comment and a, and a question. Thank you for a nice presentation. Points from Lithuania. Two <laughs> points from Lithuania. We would like to know more about Cybot. What fractions can be picked by it? Only PET or others? Yeah, I, I can take this question. Of course, we can pick uh, other fractions. So the detection system that you uh, also have on your new auto sort system, where you can uh, detect multiple uh, fractions, multiple objects, uh, is as well also on the cyborg, of course. Um, in terms of picking, um, well, detection is one thing, but picking is another thing. So especially when we talk about the really fine material uh, to pick, uh, like, for example, flakes or something like this, or really heavy material, it has somehow the limits there. Yeah. Maybe it's also a good point that, that, that you mentioned. The traditional robot systems you see today in the market uh, have a you know, detection system which uses standard color cameras and then uses deep learning techniques for object recognition. You know, we combine here also near infrared uh, sensors with color cameras. So you can, you can do much more than you know, many of the other traditional uh, robot systems you have in the market. Yeah. OK. Can contamination be detected so the system can focus on materials that are economical and technical recyclable? Technically recyclable. Not sure. Maybe this question is, so I try to take it. Um, okay. I do not fully understand. So contamination, I regard as uh, where this question is related to the cybot. Uh, and then we have a contamination. And of course, um, contamination in that sense for me is impurity. And the machine can be trained also to identify these contamination and impurities if they are by grain size and by the material behavior able to be picked, that's uh, a different story, which we have to look into what kind of contaminations we have to sort out there. So this is how I read this question. Okay, thanks. We're, I'm sure everybody is learning a lot. <laughs> yeah, because the discussions are in detail. So what does LOD mean? I, I can take, okay. I mean, I guess the naming. So LOD means laser object detection. Okay. The existing auto sort are upgradable with speeder system, uh, the former auto sort. Shall Is we it the pass it over to Tom and Fabrizio? Yes. <laughs> Let's That's see a good if idea. Still <laughs> <laughs> who, who would like to answer this one? <laughs> yeah. Um, I said that was one of the questions we already asked for. Yes, yeah. it is upgraded from the previous auto sort unit to either as a full unit or you, you just buy the, the, the air, air part of it and not, not the sensor. So, uh -huh. 
question is, the answer is yes. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Does the system have lasers and cameras or just lasers? Depends on the definition yeah. of a camera, but it, it, it has lasers and cameras uh, both on board. Okay. Yeah. We just we have reached one hour of event <laughs> so far. I can see that we have still a lot of questions. Maybe we go through the, some more and then we can finalize. Mm -hmm. Does the system have lasers and ca Oh, sorry. How does the auto sort picker decide which plastic bottles to pick? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can take this. Yeah. So what we what is very important is um, when you have uh, so the the uh, the cybot can pick mm -hmm. four fractions in theory at the same time. Uh, of course, at a certain point when objects are really close together, uh, the robots need to decide what priority to take, and this is something that you can put into the software. Uh, into the uh, as adjustment and really um, program the um, the robot system or the brain behind which fraction to choose first so watch fraction to prioritize okay uh, how many cybots I can add in a row a lot of questions about cybots and yeah, of course it, it depends a little bit uh, how you see it so if you say one uh, sensor system and then additional robot arms so this is one uh, one aspect uh, in theory, uh, it is possible to add additional robot arms. Uh, of course, what we need to mention here is from application point of view. So you can imagine that the efficiency of the, let's say, second, third, and fourth robot arm goes down. Because you have at a certain point the detection, objects are moving at a certain point, and then you have some kind of uh, uh, influence and a better impact on the performance. If you think about, of course, the ro just having a robot, always a robot cell, let's say, with the scanning system, uh, and uh, afterwards, that's of course also possible as well, which is then more effective in that case, yeah, just from And the only limitation is the length of your line. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. We have a lot of questions. Do you want to go on or should I take the last one now? Because so. some more. <laughs> is the laser utilizing the same flying beam arrangement or is it a completely separate unit? That's a very cool question. Of? Yeah, I'm thinking about that question. So, um, um, so it's a separate arrangement. So, if you buy a system, uh, a new generation auto sort, everything is prepared that you can laser later on integrate this system. And uh, so, in in terms of hardware, it's separate. Can be added later okay I think then this is the last one can you distinguish between HDPE and PP I mean visually or is it not is it not possible that's what I mentioned earlier uh, you know for for the standard robot systems you find now in the market that just use cameras and object recognition this is more difficult they need to train a lot of different types for the standard near infrared spectroscopy system that we have been using since 1996, this is uh, the most easy task you can think of. Thank you, Volker. So, everybody, we have approached the end of our launch and Q&A session. It's unbelievable the amount of questions <laughs> we have. It's really great. I mean, we didn't even answer half of them. Um, it was a pleasure to hold this event present your state-of-the-art technology, and of course, interact with you. All of these questions that were not answered, we will, we will have them on our website. We are setting a frequent asked question session on the symphonyofallsorts.com slash autosort that will be live soon. And uh, we will organize all these questions. We need a, a few hours to do that so that you find all the answers there that, you, that we, could, we could not provide you now. This is also a channel for you to ask further questions, ask for a local contact on your region, and also to download the material available about the new Autosort Speeder and what is available for Cybot. So there you can have technical information, videos, animations, get in contact with us. So that's it. We hope you have enjoyed this session. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I don't that's know well. about you. Thank, well, you yeah. Stella. <laughs> Thank you, Fabrizio and Tom, also. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
we hope you really have enjoyed as much as we did. Uh, stay safe and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your interest. You.